Hello. <clears throat> I would like to welcome you all on behalf of Institute for Political Ecology, uh, which is organizer of winter seminar of the Green Academy. Uh, I would like to make a uh, few introductory remarks uh, just to outline uh, our idea about the seminar, uh, a, b a bit of background, and uh, just run through the agenda very briefly uh, to uh, elaborate on the on the uh, some parts of the program that uh, contain certain logic we wanted to present. So. Uh, for some of you, uh, it is uh, already who are familiar with the Green Academy program. Uh, it is the first time that we decided to organize a winter seminar since we uh, actually uh, uh, built on the experiences from previous years uh, of the Green Academy. Uh, we, re we realized that we needed some kind of bridging moment between the uh, summer events uh, 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 for which Green Academy was organized since 2010. And uh, one of the main ideas was to have a kind of uh, very, uh, very dense, uh, very focused discussion on uh, certain aspects uh, of the uh, green left political agenda we uh, aspire to explore uh, and to use uh, to use periods between summer academies to, to have such an exercise. So uh, for this winter seminar is actually the first time that we are uh, doing it. For those who have not been yet familiar with the Green Academy, it, it's, be, it's been uh, designed and uh, formulated as a program of political education since 2010. Uh, and that since that period, uh, approximately six or seven hundred people circulated through this program that actually uh, had main intention to be a discussion platform for uh, ecological movement, both political and the civil society side, uh, as a kind of dialogue platform uh, with the left groups and on, on, on one side and with the liberal groups on the other side. So it was a kind of uh, uh, incubator for political discussions since 2010, and it has uh, increase, increasingly developed uh, in its volume and uh, uh, content uh, particularly <coughs> focusing on, on the issue of the commons. However, uh, we realized that we, we also need to take into account uh, very, uh, very openly and very directly, the economic agenda, which was always somehow present but not targeted very, uh, very directly. So we decided, together with the program board of the Green Academy, we decided to focus this time in winter seminar on the uh, uh, economic thought, uh, economic policies, and economic practices that could be uh, a common ground for both for Greens and both for uh, New Left uh, Europe-wide. Uh, and that's uh, how we actually departed. That's, very f uh, that's the point from which we departed in design of this agenda. Main idea is actually to present some of the existing uh, ideas, concepts, and policies that currently exist uh, in Europe as part of the uh, alternative to prevailing economic system, uh, meaning in different uh, more reformist or more revolutionary forms, but that actually do provide alternative view on how economic system can be transformed or uh, substituted by another model. Uh, that in the first part of to today's agenda, we will try to present some of these ideas, of course not all, and <clears throat> we would like to see uh, where, the, where there are convergences between, between these concepts and how they actually can operate together, uh, in which context they are functional, and 
to which extent they are actually achievable. Uh, in the second part, we would like to go more f uh, toward the, uh, the other perspective uh, and actually try to explore to which extent these concepts and, and ideas, uh, when they are uh, operating in, in, in real, real political field, <laughs> to which extent they can be realized under current constraints and current macroeconomic unfavorable conditions for such policies and proposals. So uh, we would like to, at one hand, have a kind of uh, intellectual ex exercise uh, uh, and see to which extent these concepts are uh, actually uh, can actually operate uh, uh, as a, as a, as a, at a theoretical level, but also when they are when they are kind of in the political realistic context uh, of the financialization uh, or austerity, to which extent they actually can be uh, presented as alternative at all. And uh, coming to end of the day, we will uh, try to really uh, uh, make these uh, ideas, transport, transport these ideas into uh, a, a new political imaginary on how actually new politics, uh, how a uh, new political agenda that actually could combine both green and left concerns could actually uh, uh, put some of these ideas and some of these questions uh, in, in, central, in central place of, of the program. So uh, to sum it up, uh, there is an intention behind this exercise to, to actually explore what are the main ingredients of the new economic policy for the Greens and the, for the left, and to which extent uh, uh, this uh, this is achievable and uh, uh, tr uh, transportable into political fields. We will also probably benefit from experiences that some of the uh, speakers we invited here already have, uh, since the ideas that have been developed through political campaigning uh, uh, have been tested uh, and are tested at the moment uh, in, in the uh, real political field uh, where they are confronted and challenged by uh, uh, unfavorable uh, pressures and conditions uh, at macroeconomic level at the European Union or by local forces who aim to obstruct such uh, proposals to be realized. So uh, not to be... Uh, longer anymore i would like to again thank all thank all speakers who uh, decided to join us here and uh, we 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 thought that it would be very beneficial to have both uh, a number of european perspectives uh, uh, that originate from uh, green or left movements parties think tanks institutes on one hand and also to have a kind of local contextualization uh, uh, that can uh, uh, actually approach to these concepts from our own uh, uh, our own experience uh, in the region of Southeast Europe and in Croatia. So uh, I would like to uh, pass the floor to to Daniela and Jagoda, who will be uh, on behalf of Program Board of uh, Green Academy also addressing you with uh, uh, their notes. Thank you. Um, okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is, I guess it says here, Daniela Dolenitz. I address you this morning as member of the programmatic board and also on behalf of uh, the Institute for Political Ecology. And uh, given that um, Vedran has walked you through uh, the intentions of the program and also kind of a, a very short history of um, the longer efforts that he and uh, others of us have been uh, investing in um, bringing together green and left alliances. That leaves me with a, with a somewhat lighter um, um, assignment um, to give you something more of a kind of a, an impression and, um, and maybe a message that I would like us to carry over 
uh, to this conversation that we're going to be uh, having today and, and some of tomorrow while walking on these magnificent mountains. Um, I do have to say that even though this is a welcome note, um, uh, my tone is quite, um, well, the, the metaphor that I want to use is quite macabre because I think uh, I'm relatively pessimistic at, at this um, moment in time. Uh, so but what I want to use is um, an image from a very recent movie that I think a lot of you have seen. We've just gone through uh, the Oscars uh, and, and Leonardo DiCaprio finally won that um, Oscar award. I'm not mentioning him because in order to say that he mentioned the climate it, which is also important, but I hope that some of you um, watch the movie uh, *Revenant*, because there is a scene in that movie, one of the ones, one of those which you know stick with you when you watch them, uh, when uh, at some point, in order to survive, he uh, cuts open uh, the body of a dead horse and then climbs inside because the, the conditions are so harsh and so on. In order to survive, he needs to spend time, you know, within this. Um, corpse of the dead of the dead horse um, and you know there are ways in which I think that um, um, today living in Europe is like spending time in that dead horse um, in the sense of how um, how things look you know <laughs> looking around us and um, given that uh, it's great then to see you know faces that I know and friendly faces around here uh, that I see today it's easier to spend time in that dead horse with you there and I'm sure we're going to have um, interesting conversations and, and meaningful exchanges and some laughs but it's still you know a situation which is rather dire so but to take that metaphor you know one step further what is outside the dead corpse um, is, in that movie it's a very harsh uh, harsh winter conditions, uh, freezing conditions, but I want to actually take it somewhere further and, uh, or change it by saying if that, you know, dead horse is Europe, then outside of that dead horse is a, a whole wild world um, uh, that is out there and politically um, where I want to kind of take this is to say um, given all the pessimism and the reasons for pessimism in Europe, the politics that we want to talk about, uh, which is a politics which is going to be green and left and relevant uh, today, uh, needs to take in consideration all that world outside of Europe. So a green uh, perspective and a left perspective um, must formulate uh, s not solutions, I hesitate to, to, to call them solutions, but uh, perspectives which are universal and humanistic uh, in order to, uh, to all be relevant. And this, you know, this, um, this is true if you think about uh, climate change, if you think about human impact on the planet and the environment. Uh, this is true if we care about uh, inequality, if we care about uh, forms that, you know, contemporary exploitation takes place, um, and if we want to talk about what uh, capitalism looks like today. All of these things, and I think these are some of the main topics that we'll, we're trying to cover today. Um, we need to always, uh, you know, the imperative is to break down kind of the Eurocentric perspective that we very often uh, tend to take. So that would be kind of maybe the message that I would, I would want us to keep as one of the frameworks for the conversation um, uh, today and tomorrow. And uh, with that, I would um, I would hand it over to Jagoda and say um, let's have a let's have a very good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Jagoda Muic. I'm not from Institute for Political Ecology. I'm from Zelenaktia, Friends of the Croatia and I'm chairperson of Friends of the International. So that means I work a lot on national level, regional in Balkans, to European level uh, to less extent, and then on international level. So I'm really glad, Daniela, that you ended up with this global perspective because whatever happening in Europe and, and uh, movements here I think is so bad, it's much worse uh, in the other parts of the world. Uh, just last two weeks I had to deal in my federation with one kidnapping and killings and some uh, detainments and, and injuries. So it's that harsh. Um, so we should never forget that Europe is just part of the bigger picture. And, and of course, uh, we both influence that other parts of the world and they influence us. Um, speaking of uh, bring, bridging the green left alliances, I, I would like to make a joke because you see, um, uh, lots of people, I'm coming from Green Movement, and lots of people, when they're attacking us in this country, they always accuse you of communist, being communist or being red. And they always say, oh, you know, you Greens, you turn red sooner or later. 
And I always say, say, yes, that's of course, very natural. You know, I'm Jagoda, which means strawberry. I start as green, I turn out red. That's a very normal uh, situation. So in that sense, um, uh, particularly in times of what's perceived as economic crisis in Europe, I say perceived on purpose, uh, then they always try to say, OK, we, ca we have to uh, forget about environment, and that's what we have now in Europe. We're trying to water down legislation on nature protection to provide jobs. Jobs are kind of um, main motivation to, to do that. So they by try to split the left and green movement. Um, uh, I mean, red and green, maybe you should say it in colors, uh, and to make a kind of a division and to actually have a new round of austerity measures, a new round of uh, investment uh, uh, of capital in financialization of nature. Um, our economy is not meant to, to provide jobs anyway. So this is just like PR, I would say, because our economy is, is meant to have uh, accumulation of capital, and we should never forget that. Um, have two more minutes? Oh, of course. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but uh, uh, when I look at the, the movements in the last 20 or 30 years during this neoliberal capitalism era, um, what I'm missing is I miss good narrative because you see we are fighting against and uh, even your messaging when you when you look at it, let's say message like another word is possible. It sounds like we're trying to convince ourselves that there's something else is really possible. You know what I mean? It's kind of like uh, we don't have alternative. We don't have a vision what what we want to build. And recently we have this um, uh, uh, system change, not climate change uh, motto. And and we all agree on that. But what system change is? That's the big question. And I know many organizations, both in green movement and. Uh, let's say social movements um, are debating this. I know that international trade union debating this, uh, um, some political parties are debating this to less extent. But friends of the international have dug deep in the last five years of what does system change means for us. And we came to conclusion that we definitely uh, think that this economic system that we have now and that this capitalism is uh, trashing the planet and the people in the same time. We are not just an environmental organization, we are also a social justice organization. So we always look at what is providing for benefit of people and nature together. So these are the prerequisites. These are the, the basis that we are starting points for us. Um, and what we have to do when you look at where we are now in terms of planetary borders and uh, science tells us and not only climate change, climate change is one of the nine planetary borders that we are breaching. And the second uh, most important is biodiversity loss and there are uh, seven others which I'm not going to detail now. But the research tells us that we are really uh, beyond overshooting the planetary limits. So that means uh, if we continue this way, that we will have mass extinction, not only in terms of other species, but possibly our species, human species, or we'll end up in really uh, horrible future of global wars or proxy wars everywhere. And, and if you see militarization increasing globally, this, we are definitely heading that direction. So uh, this is like this nightmare future, which we don't definitely want. So what we want is to bring social economic system, so recreate it or reconstruct it in a way uh, that is based on justice and that is in harmony with nature or within planetary boundaries. So these two uh, terms are coming from two different perspectives. One is from indigenous Latin American perspective, another is from European scientific background. Mm -hmm. Then we had also lots of discussion about capitalism per se, because you know, we agreed in our federation that uh, we, we are against neoliberalism, but are we against capitalism? And uh, of course, we, did, we dis debated what capitalism means. And you should take into account we are not scientists, we are not, particularly not social scientists, we are uh, campaigners, we are activists that are working on a social and environmental agenda across the world. So in that sense, maybe we don't have all the background needed, but we do have lots of experience from the ground. And we came to conclusion, yes, that the economic system that is based on accumulation it simply cannot work. And we came to conclusion that maybe in some countries we still cannot name it. So particularly in Eastern Europe, and that's a question for us maybe to discuss during the day on, on this uh, uh, in future, 
What we do in Eastern, what's the role of Eastern Europe, and particularly South Eastern Europe, ex-Yugoslavian countries that have been through the experience of socialism? Can we finally look at it and see what was bad and what was good? Are there any elements that we can use it or not at all? So we, we never started in this society to have such debate because we are always like, are you on this side or that side? It's never really dialogue. Um, the big question is, how we fight with global capitalism? Because if you look at it, we, we are talking lots about nation state and European uh, uh, structure, super state structure. But then uh, if you look at global capitalism, it's already international. The, the money is moving flow, you know, like it can get out of your country to the, uh, to the heavens, uh, what's the name, financial heavens. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, at the same time, we have uh, increased bo borders on, on uh, fences on the border. So, so people cannot move, but money can move and wealth can move and concentrate. So, so this is really contradiction. So even those who are for the free market, this is not free market at all, you know? It's just, if, if it would be, people would be able to move freely whenever they want to without any restrictions. So I think that's an issue for us too here in Europe, particularly in this region. And uh, we should also not forget, you know, there's this uh, uh, expectation that capitalism is going to uh, deconstruct by itself. It's going to uh, uh, vanish away because it's, it has this contradiction and uh, it's self-destructive. It's true, it's self-destructive, but it's also creative in, in a reconstructive, uh, I'm not uh, economic, I don't have no background in economics, but I came to the conclusion, if you look at it, they'll come up with new way of investment and new way of, working the system to, that it survives. So if, if, if they want the system to survive and uh, global capitalists want it, rich people want the system to survive in the way that it continues to accumulate wealth for them, they are find a way. And one of the ways was proposal of so-called green economy, which is everything now is under this green economy. Uh, in a way, it's uh, again stolen name from us because uh, what, what the proposal was, and uh, I would say to a certain extent, it was successfully fought at uh, Rio uh, in 2012, the proposal from Europe um, that you actually opened uh, new markets, you know, finalization of nature in terms of paying for ecosystem services, bringing into the market, this is going to create the growth, that's for sure. Maybe it will even protect some, in some uh, parts of nature, maybe. That's very questionable because the, if we put offsetting to it, then may, uh, probably not. But let's say maybe, but uh, it will definitely uh, not benefit the poor, poor people on the planet because they are not going to be successful uh, uh, in terms of reaching uh, uh, and using these resources. And just to give you one little example from this country, a couple of years ago, I think two years ago now, um, our state forest company uh, proposed uh, to introduce paying payment for, for walking in the forest. They already uh, introduced the, the, the payment for, for collecting mushrooms and you know, uh, fruits of the forest. So this is direction. It's going to get slowly step by step. It's not going to be overnight, so we are not getting big shock. But we will get adjusted over years to go into that direction. This is a very dangerous trend, and we should definitely be able to recognize what's behind it, what is happening, and how to deal with that. So thank you very much. I'll stop here. Um, I have here also about system change, what maybe just for credit of that, what, what four elements, the main elements um, should be in if something is a systematic change. So we developed guidance for us primarily to judge what we are doing or actions or campaigns um, uh, or structures, uh, are they uh, contributing to systematic change or just they're reinforcing existing system? And there are four main elements to it. First is uh, the, the activity or, or campaign should lead toward living in harmony in nature uh, within Earth's limited capacity or ecological limits and contributes to ecological, social, economic justice. Second is contribute to equal power relations and challenges unequal and dominant power relations. So it also includes in our own organization, how we are working, are we walking the talk or we are just talking the talk? It's a very hard task to implement, I can tell you. Um, and then third is challenges corporate power and builds the power of the people. Fourth is challenges corporate power, uh, 
uh, yeah, so that's three. Okay, thank you very much. And um, I think we will have, during the day, interesting discussion. I try to spice you up. I don't want to be too pessimistic because, um, to quote Berta Sakarekis, who, who was killed because she was opposing uh, uh, hydropower plants uh, in Honduras, you know, mm -hmm. the only thing we can do is to uh, fight against this. So let's do it. Okay. Uh, after these welcome notes uh, that uh, hopefully provided some of the uh, uh, framing for the further discussions, I would like to invite Francine Mestrum uh, as our keynote speaker to uh, deliver keynote lecture.